So before we get to making that finalized product that I gave you a little sneak peek of, let's go over a couple of the reasons why you might need an extension for the tiller of your outboard. Now, the first reason I think is pretty obvious, and that's just if your controls are too far back in the boat from your normal seating position. Now, this boat's not a great example, but if we take a look at my buddy Steve's Ginu Classic, you can see that just due to the design of the boat, the outboard is way, way far back, and if that boat didn't have a tiller handle extension, you wouldn't be able to reach the controls. That's just how that boat is designed, and it's designed for that reason as well because that seating position, it puts you further towards the center of the boat, actually further towards the front of the boat, and that's gonna help keep that boat riding nice and smooth. It's not gonna porpoise. So in my case, I could just sit back here and my controls are in a great position, but the boat is gonna plow because there's no weight up front. So that's the second reason why you're gonna want a tiller handle extension, depending on your vessel. It's so you can get the weight as far forward as possible and have the controls in a comfortable position. As you can see, there's a good, I don't know, two and a half, three feet to where I need these controls in my boat and I can sit way up front or I can even stand up and get the weight as far forward as possible so I can trim the motor up as much as possible, get the most speed and the boat is not going to porpoise. So those are the two main reasons. So with that being said, let's jump into making this thing. So before you run out to the home improvement store and start buying tons of PVC pipe, there's three things that you need to think about before you actually go and buy your PVC so you can spend as little as possible and not have to make any returns or buy more than what you need. So the first is the outside diameter of the grip on your tiller handle. What you wanna do is buy a PVC pipe that the inside diameter is slightly smaller than the outside diameter of your grip. You don't want the inside diameter to be too big because then you won't be able to clamp it down on your tiller handle grip and it'll just be falling off all over the place. So don't do that. The second thing you need to think about is the length of your tiller handle. Now to figure that out, what you wanna do is get into the position of your boat where you're gonna be operating. Whether you're gonna be standing up or sitting far forward in the seat, wherever you're at, you want your hand at your side and then this outside face of your hand, that's going to be the overall length. And maybe you wanna give it an extra an extra inch so you're not gripping the very end of your tiller. So for me, it's about right here. I might go a little bit farther because I do plan on standing up in this boat, but I've got my tape measure clamped to the tiller. So overall, looks like it's gonna be 33 inches for me. That feels pretty comfortable. So that's how you wanna measure the length of the tiller you're gonna make. Now, the third thing you need to consider is how comfortable it is to fit in your hand. Now, this inch and a half ID pipe that's going to slide over the grip on my tiller, this for me is just a little bit too big. On long runs, I feel like this is gonna get kind of fatiguing, so I'm actually going to reduce this down to an inch and a quarter. That size just works a lot better for me, and that does kind of raise a concern of the tiller handle being a little bit too floppy. It, it kind of just is what it is. This is a $15 tiller handle. We're saving a ton of money from buying a steel or even some of those carbon fiber tiller handles. They're great. They're, those things are excellent. They look awesome. They're well made. They're super rigid. They're not gonna be flopping around like PVC. But I mean, we're talking a fraction of the cost. Some of those handles are above $200. And I don't know, this is just a, an aluminum duck boat. So for me, I think this is gonna suit my needs just fine. Now, if the piece that you're gonna slide over the grip on your tiller handle is the same piece that you are gonna be comfortable with operating your motor with, great, you can skip a ton of these steps. But to start out, what you need to do is actually make a slice right down the center of this. You can use a hacksaw, you can use a Dremel, whatever you have available. It doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to work. You wanna split this so that when you slide it over the handle, it opens up, and then that's what we're gonna use our two hose clamps for to clamp this down, and it's not going anywhere. Now what I need to do is reduce the inch and a quarter PVC into this inch and a half PVC pipe. Now the outside diameter, the inch and a quarter, does not fit into the inch and a half. So I'm gonna have to use some heat and mold it in there and get it reduced. But depending on your build, you might actually be able to find adapters that reduce it down to the size that you need if you're using more than one piece of PVC pipe. So hopefully you can get lucky, but if not and you gotta make things work, follow along, I'll show you how that's done. So what I'm doing to fit the smaller PVC pipe into the larger one is I'm taking the larger pipe 
and I'm using my heat gun to heat it up. And as you can see, that little wine bottle I have next to me, I'm gonna use that as sort of a mold to kind of open up the very end of the PVC pipe. And that's gonna allow me to fit the smaller one inside of it. Now, as you can see, I'm going up and down and I'm evenly distributing the heat on the PVC pipe. So what that's gonna do, as you can see here, is it's going to allow me to get the smaller PVC pipe inside and then I'm pushing down evenly, not too hard because I don't wanna kink the big PVC pipe. And as you can see here, I've slid it down about, that's about eight inches, guys. Now what I'm gonna do is let all of this cool. So that's going to create a nice mold. So when I take the PVC pipe out, I can apply my PVC cement and I'll be able to slide it back in and there won't be any issues. And then once that cement cures, it's going to be a permanent bond. All right, so I have my smaller PVC fitted inside the larger PVC and I applied my PVC cement and I mean, it's, it's not going anywhere. So perfect. If you're doing the same thing, that's what you want. You really wanna test this, make sure it does not pull out because there's a lot of vibration going on. So you need this to be a very, very strong bond. So with that said, um, I've got kind of the section trimmed up over my tiller handle. What I need to do now is make a slit right down the middle. So when you slide it over the handle, it's gonna butterfly. And then you can use your clamps to clamp it down. Now PVC is a very easy material to work with. As you can see, um, it accepted the heat really well and uh, it formed very, very easily. Same thing when cutting it. Um, you can just use a hacksaw. If you have a Dremel, that'll be a lot easier. You can make a more accurate cut, but a hacksaw works just fine. So that's what I've got. Let's get to it. All right, so I'm just deburring it right now. You wanna deburr the inside as well. You can just use a screwdriver. It's really, really easy to deburr uh, PVC pipe. As I said earlier, it's a really, really easy material to work with if you're kind of trying to do some custom projects like this. All right, so time to see if we have a good fit. Now it's worth noting that after you butterfly cut this, if it's still too tight of a fit, you can you go back and use the heat gun to help uh, help it spread open without this being too brittle and snapping. But I think mine's close enough to where we're gonna use a little bit of persuasion. All right, yep, that worked out perfect. I didn't need the heat gun, which is great. Now I'm gonna hop in the boat and mark my final measurement. All right, so there it is, tiller handle extension. It's basically complete. Now this, plus the two hose clamps that you need to tighten it down to your rubber tiller handle on the outboard, $15. It was actually like 14 and change. Now you could stop here. This is perfectly fine. I mean, it's not gonna look pretty, but it's gonna work. Now I'm gonna make it look a little bit pretty, so I'm gonna put a little bit extra into this. And uh, yeah, I'll show you what I'm gonna do.
That ain't going anywhere. I am actually really, really happy with how this turned out, guys. I know I took a few extra steps and kind of personalized it and made it my own, but like I said, it can cost you as little as $15 to make this tiller handle extension. And truth be told, it's, it's not really that floppy considering it's made out of PVC. All the slop is actually in the connection of the factory tiller handle to the motor. So that's really good. It's, it's really not that bad. Um, it's definitely performing better than what I expected PVC to perform. So that's definitely a bonus. If you want to do this project and start to personalize it, a couple ideas that you might want to try out depending on what suits your taste the best is for the grip, you can make that out of paracord. I've seen a lot of people do that as well. Or you can just go as cheap as, you know, some colored duct tape. That'll get the job done. It'll add a little bit of grip for you. Um, as far as the paint, the AEV bumper paint that I used, that's actually the same texture and paint on my truck's bumpers. I bought a bunch of that because the original owners, they kind of put some dings in the uh, bumpers. So I got to touch those up. An alternative to just regular spray paint or textured spray paint is a product called Steel It. And I actually think that'll work out a little bit better because this type of paint tends to chip. So eventually you'll start to see the white PVC underneath the paint. Steel It is an aerosol spray paint that has metal particles in it. So it actually, it's like giving it a metal coat. It's gonna be much more resilient to scratches and chipping than this old paint. So I might end up redoing it in the future, but hindsight's 2020. You know, this wind grip, I just had this stuff laying around because years ago, I kind of wanted to get into rod building and I kind of did a little bit. I had a few extra packages of the wind rod over wrap. So I figured I'd just use it and it gave it a nice little touch. It doesn't exactly match the green I've got going on in the boat, but I'm really happy with it. But other than that, guys, I hope this project inspired you if you needed an extension for your tiller handle to just get out there and do it yourself. It can be, it's really, really simple. And the way that I built this, the tools and methods that I used, I did it as basic as possible to show that you don't need a ton of fancy equipment and that anybody can do this basically on a bench or on their knees on the ground. It, it doesn't matter. You don't need to have to have a Dremel or any precision tools. You can just do it with basically a hacksaw and a heat gun and you're good to go. So like I said, guys, I hope this video inspired you. I hope you enjoyed it. I appreciate that you brought your smiling faces to this video and I hope to see them in the next video. So until then, my name's Eric. You guys are watching the Flow Bass channel. Like I always say, don't be in so rush to get to the finish line. Take your time, enjoy the journey because that's where the adventure is to be at. So hope to see you in the next video, guys. Till then. Peace out.